Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending April 25th. First up, this is from, uh, this was posted actually on Facebook by my friend David W., who is a barber in Missouri. The Backwards Brain Bicycle. I also watched this Friday. It was on Science Friday. I don't know if any of you still follow it, but PBS Radio still has Friant, Scient, Friant Friday? <laughs> Science Friday every Friday afternoon. But this guy, he has the Backwards Brain Bicycle, and it's a bicycle that he set up that when you turn the handlebars, it doesn't ride backwards per se, it, it steers backwards. And when you turn the handle to the left, you go to the right. And when you turn the handle to the right, you go to the left. And it took him eight months to be able to, after a friend showed him a bicycle that was set up this way, he built one himself and it took him about eight months to do that, to uh, be able to learn to do it himself. And he actually made a smaller one for his kid. And his kid learned it in a matter of weeks and was able to do it. But he was... Uh, wanting to discover about brain elasticity. He's an engineer, scientist kind of guy, so uh, he wanted to, to do that. And it also shows in the video, if you watch the whole video, it's about eight minutes long. If you watch the video after he gets good at this backwards bicycle with the backwards steering, he tries to ride a regular bicycle, and he can't do it. It takes, a, well, he, it takes him a little while to do it. I mean, he starts falling down all the time, and it takes a little while till his brain kind of clicks back again, and he starts thinking the correct way to be able to do a, a regular bicycle. But... Uh, I'll have the links, uh, as everything I'm talking about, I'll have the links down below in the description, so check them out. This one was sent to me by my photography friend, Brian West, and this is the NuviCam, the Garmin NuviCam. This is one of those devices that is kind of tries to be an all-in-all. -all. It's a, a GPS and a dash camera so that when you start your engine and drive it all you know drive anywhere the camera is rolling so you have evidence of any kind of accidents or anything that takes place and it also has an accessory port to uh, put on a backup camera too now I don't know about you guys sometimes I'm a little bit leery about buying these all-in-one products because if part of it fails like if one of the electronics components would would give out then all of a sudden you've lost your backup camera your dash cam and your gps all at the same time and it's not exactly inexpensive this newbie can lmthd is 399.99 so call it 400 dollars but it does have quite a few uh, nice features it's also got I, I think it does your uh, lane alerts and stuff like that i found in my um camera when I get into real congested areas, especially of large cities with my uh, uh, GPS unit too, that sometimes it won't tell me what lane to get into, or if it does, it's uh, too late to really get over to the exit. Although I noticed lately now what happens is I get a little pop-up screen that actually shows me a picture ahead of what exit with the signs and everything, so that kind of helps. That's a, a new feature, I think, with one of the updates that came online, but yeah, if you uh, if you like an all-in-one unit like that that does three different functions, you have to actually pay extra if you want the backup camera thing. That's an extra accessory, but you get the you get the basic GPS and the dash cam for uh, the three ninety nine ninety nine. This next one, the U.S. Postal Service is currently fielding bids from vehicle manufacturers to develop new vehicles and delivery methods for its fleet, and an interesting outsider has made the latest shortlist, the Octocopter drone, designed and built by the University of Cincinnati College of Engineering and Applied Science, and developed by UAV Specialist Workhorse Group. This is not going to be uh, one of those copters that goes from your post office and delivers so much as it's going to sit the way the design, now if they keep with the original design, it sits on top of a delivery vehicle, and then when they get close to the area, maybe something like, <coughs> I don't know, maybe half a mile, Something like that, it'll actually launch from the top of the vehicle, the truck, and uh, come and deliver the packages that way. And then supposedly once it gets back to its uh, little landing spot on top of the truck, it can recharge itself in as little as two minutes. So they're coming up with the different tests and the algorithms to be able to get it to uh, deliver it right to your front porch, evidently. So that would be kind of cool to see a drone actually delivering your packages. Uh, I'm just concerned about they, they need to have a lot of built-in safety devices. I mean, with those eight rotors spinning around like that, and this thing is pretty substantially sized. If uh, if any child were to get or any any person were to get hurt by it or anything like that, boy, the lawsuits would go flying. But yeah, if they can take care of the safety issues and just what it would have to do is identify, I guess, if any anything mo moving was anywhere near in the area, it would just hold off until it. Uh, was clear to be able to land, so it'd stay away from anything that could possibly get hurt. And this next one is from, <coughs> excuse me, this next one is from Keith G. This is a, 
it's a regular channel I want to promote. It's called PBS Space Time or Space and Time and Illusion. And what it is is it's just list after list of these videos that are all of them are under about 10 minutes. And I'll give you just some of them. What they are is a, uh, the title of this one that I'm looking at right now are Space and Time and Illusion. And then it has Could NASA Start the Zombie Apocalypse? And then Could You Fart Your Way to the Moon? Is the moon in Majora's Mask a black hole? Space used to be orange. These are just different titles of the videos that you can watch on this. And they're just small eight-minute videos that you can just check out. And the channel is PBS Space Time. And so I'll post the link to that. And then one more update for any of you that used to follow Tech TV and previous to that ZDTV. There used to be shows on there called Call for Help and Screensavers. Well, guess what? The Screensavers is coming back again. Leo Laporte, which I got to... Uh, had the great um, fortune of being able to meet him in person and talk to him for a little while at one of the computer conferences. He's coming back with the new screensaver starting May 2nd, so I will uh, post the link to the overall um, description of it, and then if you scroll down just a very little ways, there's a link to subscribe <coughs> here, so you can actually get it in your regular, uh, I guess in your regular YouTube feed or through your Twit feed. It's on, uh, it's the network called Twit TV that he started, and there's lots of shows on that. In fact, I pretty much weekly watch the Gizwiz, although that's actually, the Gizwiz is actually launching as an independent production now. I guess uh, that's going to be a spinoff, so it's not going to be part of Twit TV um, starting in two weeks, I think. But yeah, if you want to uh, get a, and Megan Maroney, too, one of the um, people from the original old screensavers is going to be a part of it, too. I actually had a computer conference where I met Leo was sitting right in front of Megan Maroney. She was sitting right behind me. So yeah, if you like the old screensavers, this might be something new and cool to check out. Uh, I'm really glad that a lot of places like Twit TV are keeping the old uh, Tech TV days alive and the Tech TV type of shows alive. So that's about it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.